Hey guys, welcome back to Ava Gaming. This is Perry, and today we're going to take a look at Ori in the Blind Forest. Originally released for the Xbox One and PC, then later released for the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you're not familiar with the way we do things here at Ava Gaming, we look at video games in a way that they might be influential to the game community, gamers, developers, as we're all trying to see the positivity in games as they are influential in some way or form but of course these are just video games so let's have fun with it and let's drive straight into Ori now this game was not on my radar at all to review because of the formats of what it was for I thought it was only going to be for the Xbox one and PC then one of my closest friends said oh don't you know that's on the Nintendo Switch and you can probably play it on there for the price of 20 bucks? Not an ad, just the fact that it was 20 bucks. I was like, oh, cool. I go ahead and play it. And I had no idea what to expect just from seeing trailers from when what comes out on March 11th or in the Will of Wisp, the second installment of this game. So knowing at this point that the game is coming out, it gave me a chance to play the first one to play the second one so I grab it and by wonder was I surprised at what I played for the next 10 hours seeing how the game is only 10 hours long it was a unique experience that I was not expecting at all and with that let's dive into the story of Ori in the Blind Forest Ori in the Blind Forest is by far a sad tale you play as Ori, the spirit guardian, as you can see on the screen, he is kind of cute and you just want to hug him just by the way he looks. And he is the focal point of everything that happens within the story of the game. Or sadness comes across the forest, which leaves Ori in despair and sad and as he doesn't know what to do next as he loses the one that protected him. And then he finds a shining ball of light named Sin. And Sin is your companion and he tags along with you. These two are key to work together hand in hand as they are meant to get through the force to bring the force back to life. It is Ori's job as a spirit guardian to make the ancestral tree one again and on that version you pretty much do that through the entire game of breaking this tree and the living forces come back to life seeing a lightning place at the beginning turn dark at the very start can cause you to go like oh wow this tale is going to get dark and it made me feel like all hope was lost as what was happening on the screen because I knew it was going to be a, some kind of hero adventure, but I didn't expect it to make such a huge impact on on the emotion side of being a gamer. That's something that's unique and cool about games that it can bring you to tears or it can bring you to feel what is going on because you feel like you are that player or that character and you can understand what they're, they're going through. And Ori definitely made me feel that way as sometimes you do feel lost and you know what to do but put a hero adventure term to it and like let's save the day you're gonna fight for the greater good for ori that's what it felt like throughout the entire time as i have this spirit ball on my back helping me get through the force and to make the, the evil go away and to make sure that who did wrong to the entire force would pay but What's crazy about that is once you learn what happened with the main villain's story, it makes you feel sad for it as well. And just if the mechanics that Moon Study did to make you feel that way, like there was no escapism from that, that you were going to feel for each character in each story that was being told while playing the game. It's something that I wasn't expecting, I'm going to say that a lot throughout this entire review because it was just something that I wanted to experience and I have to say that the story was great in the sense of seeing this lightness and darkness come together and you 
understand exactly what was going on and seeing Ori grow throughout the entire 10 hour experience made me cheer on everything that happened throughout the entire game for Ori because when you see him he's just a little kid and then he turns into something more Ori in the Blind Force is definitely a coming of age story that I feel like anyone can learn from because you might lose a friend but you can also gain a friend. Sin and Ori's connection with each other makes me feel like I'm playing Legend of Zelda or Fear of Time with Link and Navi. By the way, they are able to navigate and work together to get to the next area of the forest and to understanding exactly what happened throughout the story to get to this but more of that when we hit the gameplay section the gameplay for ori is a metroidvania meaning that it is like your classic castlevania or metroid games where literally you would go from area to area getting upgrades to be able to advance the story levels by platforming or coming over obstacles and facing enemies. Ori is that same genre of it as it is a platformer and able to get to certain points and replay. But it's a different and unique experience for its Metrovania style because you can save whenever you want pretty much before you go into another area. By doing that, you don't have to do constant runs. Most Metroidvanias, you might have to do a run over and over again until you eventually get to that area with no problems and hit the save point. Ori in the Blind Forest go, kind of disregards that in the sense of having energy cells. Energy cells is what's be able to do certain abilities and certain moves that you get, but you could also save your data right before you go into the area where you don't feel comfortable that you might make through that loop what's cool about this about the abilities is like sin and ori go hand in hand sin is the person that will lead you to the next area help you with its abilities and upgrades while ori is the one doing all his jumpy ninja style wish i could do that kind of stuff in a video game attitude and you just see how those two work together it's like you need ori to get to the next area by jumping but you need sin's abilities to be able to move and you get these new abilities by discovering the ancestral trees what is cool about this is that you learn more about the story too when you grab the abilities of the ancestral tree and it didn't dawn on me that they're just not abilities as what you would see in a video game like oh i can double jump this i can leap across an uh, unexpected area i couldn't do beforehand i can swim underwater it's not just that with what you were gaining when you grab these abilities you also learn that they used to be spirit guardians too so it's like you've learned more about what happened to each individual spirit that went away. And that was something that I didn't realize at first until it was like, oh wait, that said a name. Hmm. Oh, and it just, just struck with me that you're just not advancing the story. You're also gaining people back to help you make the force work. And you can upgrade the abilities that you get you can upgrade them by having the ability points that to have the required amount to be able to upgrade said abilities. This is vital as some are unique in doubling damage because they can also attack and destroy enemies while you're trying to get through a certain area or to be able to double jump in a certain way or to be able to breathe underwater or swim faster. If you had the, the a set amount required for the ability points, then you're able to upgrade that. And seeing how this is a Metroidvania, Ori is not let up still for its ability to be punishing at times. I can't tell you how many times that I've had to go through an area several times. It just felt not hard, even after you mastered your perfect timing, because that's all this game is about, is perfect timing to get through to the next area but it's just a, the one slip up can cause you to have to restart something 
it, a big scene coming up, restart. It, it's just no way around it. And uh, of course it was hard and it made me frustrated at first, but it made me come back to do more. Not at one point was it me like saying, come on Perry, you got this. It was like, come on Ori, you got this. Because I was coming one with the game in the sense of, we can do this, you got this. And by certain points, you get through levels that you didn't think you could be able to. I appreciate what Xbox and Nintendo Studio did in that sense. And I have to say by playing it on the Switch, handheld and dock mode, I have to say that playing it handheld was better because I was able to see everything and was able to click. Of course, playing it on the bigger dock and seeing the big screen was beautiful as Ori is a unique game to look at. It was also a beautiful game to look at at the way spirits and blasts were coming at you. It was just so crazy to see that came from an indie title like this. That the spirits were always going and always coming at you and it was great but what's also cool about Ori being different from other Metro Manias is that it's escapes those escapes were unplanned for me saying I thought it was just gonna be like oh you walk in walk out kind of situation but the escapes are what gets you going at the end of each level you reach a climax where you had to escape and get away and advance the story in that sense but what's also cool is that you have to test out the new ability that sin used also using that platforming skill that ori has it's a like a balance of yin and yang it's like okay move forward sin okay ori you got this that's what the entire feeling felt like and those epic escapes water rising lava coming down things crashing down blast coming at you the entire time you have to keep on the move. Yes, there were times where I had to even restart this because it caught me off guard with the area it looked like. But going through it and doing it uh, several times afterwards, it still was a challenging task, but it was still enjoyable and exciting and fun because it was like, okay, we gotta get through this level to be able to get to the next. And to see that on the, on the screen, whether I was playing handheld or dock, it was just an enjoyable experience because you don't see that much in video games where you had to make a big escape just to every single time. And that was the thing. Yes, there's your Uncharted's where it's like constant go here and there, but we're saying just for a 2D side scroller Metroidvania where you had to stay on your toes. Yes, you can gain more life. They're called life cells. And you gain more life that way, but Ori is still kind of fragile. You can die after three hits and it doesn't matter how much health you have. It's just a sense of this game is kind of meant to be hard even on the easy difficulty. It's just about how you play. You have to be smart. Yes, save often. That's what I have to tell anyone that plays this game. Save often. You have to. If you don't save, you might have to start back all the way from the beginning. And that's something you really don't want to do because as you get frustrated for sometimes, you just might not play the game, but save, 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 save. It's, it's your best thing throughout the entire game and saving. You don't like it? Save! <laughs> it really was something that made me keep playing because I knew that once I get to a certain point, I'm like, okay, I'll save here, make my run again. It was supposed to be challenging but there's ways around it and once you figure out your groove the game can be easily beaten no matter your difficulty but they do have a one life mode where you literally have one life i didn't even want to bother testing that i was already having difficult playing on normal but i can see where if you wanted a challenge because you play these games it's there for you and i'm glad that that's there for gamers that love challenges like that, who love metroidvanias, they know what to do, what to do with the upgrades. And yes, there's a map. You see the big map and to call on with the metroidvania style of knowing where everything's going to go. You want to be a completionist, everything's there for you. They also have a achievement if you 
don't die. And I don't know how you don't die unless you're a real pro at these kind of games. And that is cool that there's that challenge for you guys because there has to be a challenge for someone. And I'm glad gamers are willing to take that challenge just to get that achievement or trophy that is out there for them. It's It wasn't for me, but that doesn't mean it's for you guys. And I'd say give that a shot if you were to give yourself a challenge. Also, the level design was filled with twists and turns as you are trying to figure out where to go in the forest and see what the forest looks like in the background is perfect. It just goes to show what the areas will look like. One time you see a lake filled with poison you're not allowed to go in it and then when you cleared that level it's filled with water and you're able to swim it's just the change of scenery was cool because you still had to go through these areas but at first they're kind to there to hurt you and then once you clear things up they're there for you to be able to advance and with minor issues the music is soothing throughout the entire game. It was something that was kind of relaxing, but it also went with what was going on. Even in those epic escapes, the music went with what was going on. It was just the right timing of the music or instruments being played. Hearing the piano, it just was touching and it made me appreciate everything that was happening in that moment. Even the little sounds that you hear from even collecting the abilities or ancestral trees or whatever you prefer to call it at this point, it was just something that made you feel more powerful and ready to go and to advance the story and gameplay. And you're like, oh, I have new powers. Let's see what we can do kind of situations. And I'm glad that it went along with what a forest would sound like in its decay state and an uplifting and you definitely see both sides from listening to the soundtrack if you were to go back and listen by yourself outside the game it was a really beautiful score to listen to and i would recommend to listen if you were just writing something down or just want to chill and relax it's all there for you so at awa gaming we use what i like to call as an influential scale meaning that instead of use your five out of five or 10 out of 10, we use an influential scale rating on how it might be an influence to the gaming community and gamers and just the positivity that that game could bring. We do this by using not influential, potential, influential, and very influential. And I have to say that Ori in the Blind Forest is influential for its ability to take the metroidvania genre and make it completely different by being able to save at certain spots it's escape mechanics that i haven't seen in such a long time since the escapes of normal metroid games just at the end running back to the ship and seeing that be used throughout the entire game it was something that like i said wasn't expecting i thought it was just gonna be the one time through but it was being constant through the end game and it made me excited and appreciate what was happening on the screen as I was cheering Ori and sent on to get to the next area to bring back the blind forest because where there's death there's life and they were trying to make sure to do their due diligence as spirit guardians to bring back the forest to being lively and to not be in misery and mystery and at the end of the game, it made me appreciate every person that's been in my life, all my friends and family members, as you're not in this alone and you're always here to learn something from each other. And I got that from playing just a small title game that for 20 bucks that I didn't think I would like thoroughly, but after playing it and being kind of interested in seeing what the sequel would look like, it made me pumped even more to play the sequel as we're in the Willow Wisps will be coming out on March 11th and I would love to see what Moon Studio has in store for the next one as from the trailers alone of Ori and the Willow Wisp and playing Ori in the Blonde Forest it just makes me think that there's something exciting there's more to tell and 
just to be able to play as Ori again and just to advance his story and see what he's learned and how he's be able to become more of a spirit guardian and protecting the forest as he was supposed to. That is what made this game influential to me and it made me appreciate it. And, and I would like to hear your opinions in the comments below if you enjoyed Ori or if you are excited for the sequel as it is just a right around the corner. If you want to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and do so. Leave your comments, hit the like button, hit that little note bell so you know when I, the next review is coming. Like I said, guys, there's going to be more coming and just to be enjoy to hear your thoughts on a game like Ori. What did you think? I thought it was great. I thought it was an influential game. It's changed my perspective on some things that I really enjoyed. It was very positive and what I needed just to just a nice little nudge at the heartstrings. And after playing it once I'm through, I am going back and just to do some of the platformers. It's still challenging, but it made me a better gamer in that sense. And I enjoyed Ori in that. Y'all have a good one. This is Perry.